Any other, uh, John, any operations that stick out in your mind as sort of the, the pinnacle of, of your tour over there? I think the one that when Ben Tui got hit, or, or uh, San and Doc, mm. that one, that was the, the big one. That flew all night long, you know, we were up for like 12 hours just putting strike after strike after strike in. So you're, yeah. so you're sitting there and the base starts to get attacked. And is it, is it the first call? Is that a contingency plan that you all have? Hey, if we start getting attacked, we're gonna get these birds out of here? Well, the, the first reaction was to get to the bunker just so, okay. it, you know, then you know, assess the situation. And then we, there was that lull, and I said, now's the time to go. And we, we just ran out to the helos and hopped in and took off. And how many guys were on base defending the base, or did everyone get in either helicopters or swift boats and get out of there? Well, there was, the base was, was an open area. There was no perimeter around deck six. Hmm. And, uh, and I'm not sure there was a perimeter around the, the, the barges that were on the river. They just had a whole string of barges right there down the river. And it wasn't a big village or anything. Mm-hmm. But uh, we didn't have any perimeter guards around where we were. And we were just a couple hundred yards off from where the, the barges were. So we just got in the bunker. And after we took off, and then we went back because we weren't sure about the rest of the people that were there, the crew, the other pilots. And so, but we found mm-hmm. out that they had gotten to the boats and, and got out. How much fuel, how long can you guys fly for in the Huey? When you're loaded out to bear, a couple hours. Yeah, hour and a half. Two. Most flights are pretty I mean, short, I mean, but an hour, hour and a half is a long a, flight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the twenty-minute fuel light is very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I had one mission where we came back, and I, we literally the twenty-minute fuel light came on. We went back up to Kamau, which was where Det Three was, and as we as we touched down, the engine shut itself down. We ran out of fuel as we were touching down. <laughs> Were so. you flying with me when we had to land and send out for fuel because we ran out? No, I was, we, no, I was, we got I heard about that. We literally got a ammo can of fuel. Uh, yeah, well, this is, this is in Scramble the Sea Wolves, right, <laughs> yeah. this story. Yeah, and, and tell Mike, us about Mike, that one. Mike Dobson was my crewman again, and we didn't run out of fuel, but I, but I landed at Hati Inn because I was at the end of the 20 minutes. And that light gets bigger and bigger. And at nighttime, it's huge. just like the sun. <laughs> at daytime, it's still pretty damn big. What was and the mission that you were doing? We were covering SEALs that day, and I don't remember what the Pacific operation was. The, the missions all come together. I remember Mike Slattery asked me on the phone one time, uh, how about blah, blah, blah? And I said, you know, they all kind of blend together. It's hard to separate them out. I remember the Zulu one in detail. I I dream about that one, and and uh, and thank God about it every night. Not every night, but most nights. Um, but we were we were covering uh, seals, and, and and Mike Dobson could give you more detail. But uh, it uh, we had to make a call about whether we. We end up with less fuel than my wingman, and we end up swapping stations and refueling one time to cover back and forth. But we got, I got so low I couldn't go back. At the time, the SEALs were already in. We were safe. but So you stayed on station to support them. Absolutely. Even though you were low on fuel, and you, you had enough fuel just to get them and then make it to a rice paddy somewhere. And basically, well, there was an old place <laughs> called Hot Tien. There was even, it wasn't no fuel there, and there wasn't really a landing pad there. It was a rice paddy near a little town, yes. <clears throat> and so we set a perimeter up, and we <laughs> sent out for fuel. <laughs> and by sending out, sending out for fuel, <clears throat> you you grabbed ammo cans, ammo cans, and, and, and f- pulled fuel from the other bird. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and and uh, <laughs> it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> you think about it. how can you let yourself run out of fuel? Well, sometimes you don't have. And you know the big thing is contamination. You worry about getting fuel contaminated, mm-hmm. and but it worked out okay. We made it. But that was. Uh, it takes Mike Dobson to tell the story. He can tell it without any alcohol. <laughs> He's a better storyteller than I am. Mission focused, that's for sure. 